Welcome to Geordie Lass and Doc Sass. One day, a Geordie and a Canadian walk into a bar and decide to start a podcast about relationships and what a topic that is. No subjects are off limits. Get in touch today with us at geordielass.com or email info at geordielass.com and let us know what you think and what we should talk about. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. How is it going? Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. I like, I feel like I'm kind of in the zone for what we're going to be talking about today because I'm just feeling like, I don't know, there's this like reset in my life. I feel like I've kind of taken a big step forward through a lot of hard work. And so I'm kind of in a reflective stage. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. not going to last forever. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I think it's a bit like that tidying bug that you get. You know, sometimes you just get this urge to tidy up and organize your life and just be generally a bit more adult. <laughs> I think you've got to go with those moments whenever they come. And that's the same for your relationship, too. You know, it's so funny because I'm like, I'm feeling a bit more adult in a relationship these days. It's not going to last <laughs> forever, but yeah, I'm just going to roll with it while I've got it. Hey, yeah. 100%. That's the way it goes, girl. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So yeah, all is good. How about you? Good. good. What's going yeah, on? I'm really good, thank you. It'd be better if the weather wasn't so crap, but I am good. I'm not <laughs> going to let this get me down. Oh, okay. so funny. As we're recording, apparently there's like going to be more rainfall like in one hour tonight than there is usually in one day. So apparently Athens yeah. is just watering all the plants so that everybody who comes and visits Greece in the next few months in the summer will have glorious plants on display. Well, that is a lovely positive spin you just placed in. Well, I'm wanting to go out to tango tonight, and I think it's going to be with very wet feet. So just saying, (laughs) yes, I need to find the positivity. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a very good reframe. I'm proud of you. Oh, exactly. Well, you know, got to be coached as well as coach. (laughs) So, okay, we got something special tonight. I mean, today. We have. We are, yeah, we are going to take a bit of a diversion from our usual podcast format to bring you a little bit something special this week. Oh, tell us more. (laughs) (laughs) Well, as you, I guess, hinted at in your opening statement, we are going to talk about all things relationship reset tonight. Okay. All right. So what is a relationship reset? Got to start there. Yeah. So, well, I guess this could be slightly different for everybody. But I think of it a bit like, you know, if you just take a pause, take a breath, maybe walk down a kind of lovely lane and just soak up the atmosphere and the environment and the energy that surrounds you and just really focus on kind of what does all that mean to you? Where, you know, where are you in this kind of space in your relationship? What's working? What isn't working? And really just take that time out to think about just things at a slightly deeper level. And it's not something that we're particularly great at, especially when it comes to relationships. You know, I see often there's this kind of comparison between how we kind of view our careers. So we'll spend, we often kind of fall into jobs and careers and a certain path and we kind of remain on that and we don't really question a lot of things and it all gets a little bit comfortable, so we kind of stay where we are. We tolerate some of the things that we may not like in that career and that job choice, because overall there's a certain level of either satisfaction or there's a there's a fear about making any changes or or mm. doing anything that's too drastic, because we just don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think there's that exact same parallel that happens with relationships. So we get into a really kind of comfy position, even if that comfy position isn't quite that comfy. Mm -hmm. and we kind of stick with it we live with it we kind of carry on just going through the motions sometimes and we don't really take a step back to say actually is any of this kind of what I want is am I where I need to be am I where Mm. I want to be is it bringing me joy is it bringing me happiness exactly the same way we do in kind of like careers and things we don't really just take take a step back so I see it as a real opportunity to kind of put your Put your love life under the microscope, uh, which sounds absolutely terrifying for most people. And as I'm saying yeah. the word, I feel terrified by it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so what yeah. about you? What do you think it means? 
I think it's that. Sometimes you have the luxury of having satisfied some of the other more pressing needs, sleep Mm -hmm. deprivation, et cetera, where you're able to kind of look with a sort of wider lens at like, how else can I optimize? I will say we will also reach the need for a reset if we have finally reached a breaking point where the pain Mm. of change becomes a little less painful than the pain of staying as it is. So I might also reach out for a relationship reset when I have had it. Oh, yeah, 100%. (laughs) But I think what we the biggest mistake I think that we make is that length of time between kind of general unhappiness Mm. and Mm. I can't take this any longer Mm -hmm. there's this kind of gap in between and that can be incredibly long right so people think oh yeah you'd maybe tolerate it for a few months people tolerate it for years Mm -hmm. and there's this gap where we gradually kind of get used to the status quo that just isn't a happy place but we stick with it anyway and then something will happen that kind of you know, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, if you like, mm-hmm. will happen and that's it. And then we press the fuck it button. I can't <laughs> deal with this any longer. And very often the mistake that we make then is to go, right, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm done. Mm-hmm. But we haven't had anything in between that has helped us really reflect, understand, bring greater consciousness and awareness to where we are so that we can then make better choices. We just go from naught to 100 and I'm packing my bags and I'm out the door quite often. Oh, listen, guilty as charged because it (laughs) took so much energy for me to go and tolerate silently that by the time I'm like, that's it, I'm done. If somebody says, yeah, but we haven't worked on this, let's try counseling. I'm like, I have no more Fs to give and I have no more gas to give. Because you've been silently kind of going through that process on your own, in your own mind, which is like just really terrifying and scary. And the the thought process that you can come up with and the kind of the what ifs and the scenarios that you can imagine, you've already done kind of like a full marathon before your partner's then saying, look, I think we should train for a fun run. Yeah, totally. And I'm like judge, jury and executor. I'm like, no, nah, it's oh God, yeah. I've already executed our relationship in a vacuum yeah. without yeah. my partner being able to meaningfully participate. And I will have said in the past, my partner doesn't want to do counseling doesn't want to do the work, yeah. right? So I will, mm. so huh? takes two to tango, I have learned as I do a post-mortem, that wasn't entirely true. But yeah. hopefully, as I'm saying these words, other people are nodding emphatically going, yeah, yeah I've been there. Yeah, I'm yeah. in there. Mm-hmm. It's true. It is true. I think we never know what somebody's going to do or not do. We make these sweeping assumptions and, and kind of statements that we haven't actually kind of explored because it's easier to come up with your own story and version of events than it is to ask the question and have that typical conversation that says, I think that we need help. And mm-hmm. I think we should kind of explore things on a different level about our relationship. That is way more terrifying than just conjuring up your own scenarios. Absolutely. So if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I think I'm in the mood for a relationship reset. Bravo. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. That takes a really brave step. And I will say that as I've matured in relationship, it's I wish that I had gotten to that place sooner before before the relationship was on life support upstream. So relationship reset, if you're thinking you might be open to it, congratulations. Yeah, (laughs) big kudos. I think there's always a time to kind of take take a reset to just kind of pause and think about kind of where you're at, you know. We often think, oh, the relationship's working well, I don't want to kind of, or it's as good as it can be, kind of heard that before as well. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't kind of, I don't want to think that that my relationship is broken. I can't think about it in that terms. Nothing really needs fixing. We've done okay as we are till now. But I think that is, that that comes from kind of thought process of, of not wanting to kind of expand things. And and it comes from a place of fear, really, because I'm, you know, I am scared that if kind of, you know, dig a little bit too deep, then I might find something that actually I didn't want to hear or I didn't like or puts what we do have right now in jeopardy. Oh, by all means. And I don't want to seem too needy because then I'll be abandoned. I don't want to raise troubles because then I'll be abandoned. Absolutely. So remember, and I think folks 
like us who have been around the merry-go-round a few times. <laughs> you know, folks who've been divorced, right? Yeah. When we go into a new relationship, what we realize is the start of every relationship is this infatuation phase where we do any number of things like, mm, that's a bit of an annoying trait, but it's not a big deal. I'll just tolerate. Or, man, it's make it's it's a, it's taking a lot of energy for me to act like I am super interested in Dungeons and Dragons, but they're really into it. So I'm just going to keep really kind of mindlessly going along with it, even though it's totally mm. it's totally taking a lot of energy. The energy will run out when you reach the end of your infatuation phase, and we all know that relationships take phases. There's the initial dopamine driven infatuation. And that'll always give rise to this dark reckoning, dark night of the soul of a relationship where you see each other for who you really are and you don't have that love struck dopamine to keep sailing you through those long nights, candlelight and wine and endless lovemaking. <laughs> so one time or the other, we're going to need to lean in on communication and the right person will be open to embarking on this with you, even if you yeah. have to start it off. Yeah, exactly. And I think the other thing is, you know, you don't necessarily need your partner to follow a process with you or to start to kind of to look at things and just see things through a different lens. It's perfectly possible to embark on something and, and do your own per work and personal development to affect the overall dynamic in a relationship. Absolutely. So. Well, tell us, like, what are the common things that, the pro common issues that you mm -hmm. are encountering or the things that you see will be around the corner for which you may yeah. want to take a relationship reset? Yeah. So I think there's lots of things really, you know, that people can come across in, in terms of, you know, common challenges that we face in relationships. There's, there's a few that kind of spring to mind that if you asked anybody what the kind of top three things that couples will face you know, they're going to say a kind of conflict. So mm. how do you fight? Do you fight fair? We've talked about that in the podcast many a times. Mm. Communication, I think it comes up pretty much every podcast we record mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> for obvious reasons. We're not great at it. There are so many flaws in kind of how we communicate and how we react and respond to each other. I think intimacy is something that's like really key. So you see that a lot, like I, I see it in a lot of relationship forums and things like that that talk about how intimacy is just, you know, taking a nosedive. And it's really, really hard because if you've got some of those other problems, then intimacy is going to be affected. That's just kind of life. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to kind of feel that same level of passion and energy when you are kind of, you know, constantly rowing or you just don't feel like you're on the same page when it comes to kind of talking about things or having your needs met or kind of voicing your opinions, those sorts of things. It's very, very difficult in that environment to be kind of super loved up and, you know, want to jump into the sack with each other. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I kind of feel like they're some of the real kind of common things that we see quite a lot. But I think there are many other areas in relationships that we don't ever explore that are mm. a challenge. Mm. So I think one thing that comes to mind for me is how we view the relationship in terms of kind of strengths and, and weaknesses. And we have much more we know as human beings who've got this, this, this bias towards looking at the negative. And that's inbuilt in us. It's inbuilt in us for protection. It's ingrained over kind of years of ancestry. But unfortunately, that doesn't help us when we're in a tricky situation with our love life because we're naturally going to be drawn to all the things that we believe our partner are doing wrong. It's like, oh, they've done this again, they've done that again. And you're almost kind of chalking up a scorecard then of mm -hmm. all the things that just aren't right about your relationship. I think if we switch focus on that and said, instead of doing that, what if we started to kind of count all the strengths? What if we actually kind of lifted the lid a bit and really looked at who am I? Who's my partner? What are we like together? And what is it that makes us really brilliant? Because even in times of kind of despair or at your lowest weak moments, there are still going to be some things that are really great about you that aren't, that wouldn't exist if you two weren't together in that relationship. Oh, 5,000%. And, and then dovetailing onto that is the recognition that you self-sabotage relationship because of yeah. deep insecurity, and this might also get into attachment styles, where you yeah. have issues with fear of abandonment and you f you feel yeah. that you're not inherently worthy of love. 
And rather than being rejected, you're going to make darn sure that you're the one who <laughs> pulls the plug. So, and it's something that like if you're, once you've had enough times around like sabotaging relationships, you start to realize that like, oh my gosh, this is a negative point. This is a red flag. I can't believe he's doing that, et cetera. And then start to realize, are you just bringing up issues because your brain is is deeply unsettled with peacetime? Yeah. And if things are going well and there's the positive, right? Oh, I don't trust that. Let's come up with something that's negative. So our brains can get very busy with yeah. making stuff up or amplifying things. Yeah. And the danger with all of that is you don't even know you're doing it. That's no, no, that's a thing. thing right? You don't. Like, <laughs> honestly, before yeah. I started doing the work that we do all the time with couples and, you know, really looking at those attachment styles and what they mean and why they show up for us in relationships and how they show up for us, because that's the thing, like, you know, there's something wrong, like you can tell that there's something not right. And you maybe kind of do things and you're like, shit, I have no idea why I did that. That's the complete mm -hmm. opposite to what I wanted. Why am I, why do I have these, it feels like kind of moments of madness. Why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. And we go through this kind of process and it's because we just don't understand, like nobody has helped us. Nobody has sat down and said, actually, do you know, have you ever looked at kind of the type of person you are in relationship, the role that you take on? And then how that might manifest itself in a in a maybe kind of unhealthy way. And how with some little kind of tweaks and changes, you could have a completely different outcome. Like, who told you that in school? Yeah, not. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like not at all. Your college days and you're having yeah. chats with your mates about kind of what a relationship's like. It was never about that. It was always the kind of insecurity side of life like oh he hasn't texted me he hasn't oh, gosh should I wait like how long do I do it what is this text message you know this over analyzing that we do mm -hmm. rather than taking a step back and going actually why am I doing this uh, exactly exactly yep you know we don't stop to question it no absolutely and I, I think a, a client just said like why was why how much time did we spend learning long division in school when we could have been you know <laughs> learning something a bit more useful. Absolutely. And and that's something like in real time, like right now, and I notice my busy little brain, like every few weeks, mm. it has to invent something like, oh, you thought life was good, but guess what? Look at this thing. It's very red flaggy. This means that this relationship won't end. Catastrophe. Mm. No. And once you realize that the call is coming from inside the house, mm. as my lovely friend says, then you start to be on to yourself to realize like, wait a minute, because our our the relationship reset is going against the trend of the H and M fashion trend of relationship. Don't mm. like it? Just throw it out because it was it only cost ten dollars, ten euro, ten pounds. Get a new one. Yeah. The relationship reset is for people who realize that a good coat will last you years if you invest <laughs> time and effort and money into or uh, time yeah. and effort into it. And yeah. that's why you would want to do a relationship reset. Yeah, definitely. And I think those, you know, that makes me think about the other ways that we sabotage our relationships and we can be quite kind of, you know, we can shut down in relationships so that we think that we are being open. We think that we are accepting of our partners. We think that we want to kind of welcome more love into our lives. But actually, there's all these subtle ways where we cause a, a barrier between us and our partner or you know, we're kind of like half in, we're half out. We talk a lot about com about commitment mm -hmm. and we can kind of like, there's so many different ways that we can close ourselves off to that relationship so that actually we're never giving ourselves a fighting chance of making it work, of making it happen. And you're right, by just taking a pause and taking a, a reset in your relationship, you can start to address some of these areas and some of them are kind of less common or we're mm. just not aware of them or wouldn't even think about them. And I think that's the biggest thing is as soon as you can shine a light on some of these wider topics that are 100% affecting your relationship, whether you see them or not, hmm. then you can start to gain much more visibility about some of the kind of small steps. Like I talk about making small but significant changes to impact your relationship. And and that's what it's all about. I I think we get kind of terrified about some of this kind of more exploratory work because we don't know what it's going to uncover, mm -hmm. but I would say none of the none of this work is kind of um, stuff that's going to completely blow your life apart. It's not, but it's about taking 
kind of like little small significant steps to make the improvements that you need to and you can do it at your pace right none of this is saying right by kind of the end of next week you need to have Mm. completely re-examined all of these areas of your life and made some really hard decisions that's not what we're talking about here yeah yeah we're talking about kind of taking little baby steps that you feel comfortable with but safe in the knowledge that you're exploring the right areas and you've got kind of that support and guidance and and help along the way. Ah, nice. Okay, well, okay, so let's dive in and tell me more about, okay. like, <laughs> why would I know that it's the right time to take the reset? If you ask me, I'd say every time is the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, like, and I would say that, right, because this is the kind of work that we're in and, you know, we collectively kind of take part in, and work with clients. What upsets me when I see kind of clients who come for kind of one-to-one work, they are that kind of breaking point and, you know, they'll talk about how they've been in this position for kind of two years, three years, four years, five years, however long it is. And they're at the point where they still know that they love each other. There's still something, otherwise they wouldn't come, right? Mm -hmm. They're not quite ready to give up, but they've endured all of this heartache. And so I would say, like, don't ever let it get that far down the line you know it's a bit like saying when's the right time to start an exercise regime well always Mm -hmm. you know you don't want to wait until you're kind of you've put on an extra 10 kilo and you're unhappy anymore start it now because whatever you do it's going to benefit your life because you you take a movement you you take an action Mm -hmm. you are on the kind of front foot and you're being proactive so I do firmly believe that any time is the right time to kind of take a look and I don't think we should ever kind of rest on our laurels I think we should be continually learning and developing and trying to grow in the relationship but equally you know I understand that most people if the going's good they're just going to leave well alone but I think there'll be certain kind of signs that you see in your relationship that tell you you're not, you know, things aren't as good as they could be. Mm. And if you know kind of in your gut, which generally we kind of do, Mm -hmm. then and there's that kind of nagging doubt or, you know, if you feel like there's a certain level of toleration in your relationship, like just start to explore it. And it sounds like one of the barriers that you, that would be standing in people's way of, of doing this work is thinking, oh, it's okay, and kind of letting it, sweeping it under the rug again. Like, that's a, do I really need to? I think one of the things that I see a lot is, yeah, but my partner doesn't want to do it, doesn't want to work on this, doesn't want to do counseling with me. I feel like I'm on my own, like I'm foraging ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's that person to do then? I think you do the work, right? If you've got a real interest in making a difference, and we know that even if it's just one person, I've seen it time and time again with clients, right? One person decides they're going to take some action. They're going to have an intervention of some shape or form. And as a result of that, they are going to learn more about themselves. They are going to gain a whole different perspective than they would have had before, because we know that through the kind of work, whether it's kind of working with somebody one-to-one, whether it's doing something in a group setting or whether it's doing something on your own, that's kind of self-study. Any time where we explore who we are and, you know, where we find kind of joy and purpose and happiness and, and where we're not, and we start to make changes and shifts in that area, we are going to change and we are then going to change the dynamic in our relationship as well. It, absolutely, that's true. I have the honor of coaching a number of clients in couples. And, and that's a beautiful thing because in real it time, is beautiful, yeah. yeah <laughs> Having said that, I coach probably more individuals Mm. because they have been sent to me me to rehabilitate their ways. (laughs) (laughs) And so I end up having, I end up trying to coach the couple through the individual. And it's absolutely, I see it time and again that when my client, who is the brave person showing up for the work, um, when they bring these uh, exercises or these action items back to the relationship that their chess piece moves and therefore the entire chess board starts to shift. And any shift is positive because I think the biggest thing that people, and I've been there, I hate the the predictable pattern of arguments that happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I don't even mind if it's good, bad, or ugly. I just want something different. Let's 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 have the argument shift 
and go in a little bit of a different direction. Yeah. At least to but, start. But let's take that scenario then for a second, right? Mm. And just explain how just by one person changing, you can change the dynamic because you're right, you do, you get the, the same typical arguments that go on a kind of loop. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe your pattern of behaviour is, well, you know, things kind of start off, we'll be talking about something, then out of the blue, the conversation escalates. We each have a side, we have a position, we are firm with that position. We then, the conversation gets kind of louder, the voices get more raised, we get more, we can feel the kind of, you know, that hormonal flooding that happens in the body where we just feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can't quite kind of process. We end up then kind of really shouting at each other, you know, and, and I'm sure lots of people will identify with this. So if that's your kind of common pattern, and then maybe you don't speak then for two weeks. Oh, yes. <laughs> before eventually you kind of go, look, this is kind of ridiculous. And the ice starts to thaw a little bit and you kind of, you each start to kind of relent a little bit and then gradually you'll get back to some sort of normality. But the real maybe... issues swept under the rug, let's be super clear. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You probably haven't talked about any of it. And Absolutely. then, you know, things kind of subside a bit and you gr- you ground for a few weeks and then sure enough, same thing happens again. So that that's common, right? When we oh see my, that like, in relationships. You're, you're talking about my <laughs> yes, <laughs> my gosh, yeah. I see myself in that description. We all do, right? We've all had those moments. Now, if you've been doing some work, whether that's kind of with your partner, without your partner, and you have started to say, "Well, actually, I don't want to continue that loop anymore," so there'll come a point during that escalation where if you change one thing, so if you say. I recognize this pattern and I really don't want to do this right now. Can we take just five minutes out? Can we just simmer a little bit? Can we each just process where we're at and what's happening? And then can we come back together and talk? Or can we come back together in an hour and talk? Or can we come back tomorrow and revisit this when things have settled a bit? So that one change, that what, and that's one person. It only needs one person to say that. And yes, you might be faced with the other person going, no, no, I want to sort this out now and being really insistent. However, if you stick to your boundary and say this really isn't going to work for us, look at the last 10 times we've been in this situation. And it is possible to diffuse the, the, you know, diffuse the argument in the moment. And that's by one person learning how to put in some strategies to be able to do that. So that's just kind of one example. If you then look at that across the rest of your relationship and many other areas, then you can start to see there's actually quite a lovely calming, soothing effect that happens in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And we begin to feel safer in the relationship because actually one person is, is taking charge a little bit and providing a slightly different way to do things. And then the effect you see is being quite positive. And of course, you want more of that then. Yes. And the big fear here is that your partner will not take to that boundary setting. But again, mm-hmm. any change in that chess piece is going to give you more information. And your partner, even if you guys are at loggerheads and can't agree on anything, the one thing you can agree upon is even your partner would admit this is a different pattern because you have brought a new element into it. Yeah. So even if we're still not agreement in, in agreement, even though we're still in huge conflict, it does feel a little bit different. Yeah. And that is a bonus. Yeah, so don't yeah. be afraid of like, don't be saying, oh, if it's not successful, then then it's not worth doing. No, just breaking out of your pattern. I can almost guarantee you the first time something changes or you try to change your action, <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to fly, right? So, and this again is a big mistake that we make because we, there is something, it's called the, the negative dance and we get into this. Mm-hmm. And, and as we go through this kind of infinite loop, we are each in this kind of push-pull scenario and it doesn't work first time. Of course it doesn't. But the more that we do things and the more we repeat behavior that's going to eventually we know will have a positive impact, then the less that kind of resistance is that you start to kind of feel. Sometimes we need to trust that the things that we are doing are the right things and it is going to pay off and we just need to keep doing it. But we're not very good at situations that don't give us instant gratification. We're very, very good at going, well, that was a waste of time. 
Yeah. What was the point of trying? We're amazing at that. But instead, or we we'll, you know, we look to blame our partner all constantly because we're taking that external factor where we're like, well, I've really tried here. You've changed one thing, right? Like, and done it once. It was a, yeah. it was a big step. I, yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. I know that making changes is a big step. But when we don't get that instant reward or the instant outcome that we expected to see, we're really, really quick to give up. And that is like a phenomenal mistake because we need to keep going. You know, I always think about the kids and when they were young and said, you know, you've got to be able to try things 12 times before Mm. you can decide if you like them or not, because it takes a while to change patterns, behaviours, the way that we think. And that is just so true in relationships as well. If we're going to try something new out that we haven't done before, we can't expect it to work first time. We've got to keep plugging away at that and keep going. Uh, Absolutely. I think the other thing too is that when we have taken sides, conflict, and we've our communication is broken down, we feel so scared around our partner. We don't want to share our vulnerability because trust has broken down. So if we venture and stick our neck out and it doesn't sort of lead to this magical outcome, which it won't because our partner is still very stuck down in defensiveness, is still stuck in the old pattern, and we conclude, oh, see, that didn't work. It's because we're rightfully terrified about being vulnerable with our partner. And I think one of the important things to ask yourself is, do I have reason to trust my partner that they will, even if they're mad at me, even if they're defensive, Mm -hmm. even if our communication is broken down, will they treat my attempt with some degree of kindness or Mm -hmm. compassion that I'm not at danger of trying. The, the question is, is, are, is it dangerous for you to try again? And if it's not dangerous and it's just your ego is bruised, well, yeah. Yeah. you know, part of that is like trusting in our partners and we've lost yeah. the ability to trust. And we leave like kindness and compassion at the door, don't we? It's like it's parked outside. We save it for other people because oh. we're too busy being absolutely furious and mad and wanting to prove a point to our partners that like we no longer bring that that kindness and that compassion to a relationship when we're in a state of unhappiness because it becomes about actually how do I win because I kind of feel like I'm right in this situation oh absolutely they're wrong and our relationship will only get better once they have this change come to the light (laughs) moment and they change exactly and my needs are not being met so i'm on strike and i'm going to make sure that their not needs are going to be met because we don't want to suffer alone happiness unhappiness loves company yeah but it's i'm miserable you'll be miserable yeah yeah Yeah. i want you to suffer as much as i'm suffering and that's the situation we get into now as soon as you're in those stakes that's it like and you really do just save all of the kindness and happiness for everybody else. Absolutely. Which really, I mean, you're kind of sharing a life with this person. You chose them. They chose you. <laughs> I know. And and forget that. Well, I think we say that, but then we say, ah, this is not working. Let's get divorced. Because yeah. divorce is an option. You and I have both availed yeah. of that divorce. And I and I yeah. stand behind. Well, that may be. That. Yeah. But I stand behind my divorce. But at the same time, <laughs> could I have saved my relationship? Maybe. Like, yeah. a lot of us look back on the, our prior relationships and say, if I were more mature and they were more mature, we probably could have done something yeah. differently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think a lot of the time it's because we don't know how. Like, we don't have we to don't. know how, how. We haven't got the tools. We haven't got anybody guiding us. And, you know, up until about 20 years ago, I don't even think people really talked about relationships. There were just stuff that you had and you got into it. You didn't often even share stuff with kind of friends and family because you just didn't want to. It was very kind of private and that just wasn't what you did. I think people are a bit more open about talking about things now. I think there's more support out there, but I still think there's a, a stigma attached to seeking help and support for your relationship. Totally. It has not drifted far from, you know, 50 years of marriage celebrating old folks who are like, oh, yay, cutting the cake when they're like, gosh, I have tolerated you for 50 years of my life. (laughs) But, you know, Instagram does that now these days. All these happy, shiny photos. People will craft Instagram moments to make themselves momentarily feel better in a sea of unhappiness. And so we really have not left the Victorian era of keeping up appearances. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. okay, so so I'm sold on relationship <laughs> reset. I'm sold You're about the benefits. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. tell me about Good. the process. Okay, all right. So I haven't shared kind of too much on the podcast about the, the, the course that I've got, which is called Relationship Reset. <laughs> And in that, it is it is a self study thing. So you can you can just you go and download it, you buy it, and you embark then on twelve weeks of taking a reset for yourself. Mm. And as I say, you don't have to do this with your partner. And it's one of the biggest questions that I get asked, like, well, like how can I do this on my own? You absolutely one hundred percent can do this on your own, and it will impact your relationship, and it will bring kind of a positive benefit. Okay. And um, I think one of the, you know, I did have a couple of quotes that have been, that have come back from people who've kind of taken part in it. So one of the quotes was, it's such an eye opener and a great self development tool. So it is this whole thing about actually, this is me, this is my growth. And I'm doing this with the, you know, with an eye on the impact for our relationship, because it's 100% all about relationships and the things and the common challenges that we face in relationships. And how to navigate those. So you can sign up, as I say, you'll get weekly doses of your re- relationship reset. So you don't get it all at once. So it's not overwhelming because that can often be the thing like, oh God, I don't want to kind of embark on something. People think it's never the right time to do something because yeah. there's always something else that you can think of hmm. that's going to get in the way or to do. But it really is kind of like self-paced because even though you might get a new module every week, you can decide how long you take in order to go through that material. So it does track the 10 most common challenges in relationships. And we've talked about quite a few of them um, during our discussion about the things that you face, like conflict, communication. Um, it does look at kind of strengths and kindness and compassion and how you get more of that into your relationship Mm. so some of those things that we will be less knowledgeable about and you know the obvious ones are kind of how do you communicate better because Mm. a lot of us kind of do that in a poor way but some of those secondary um skills and understanding about kind of the role that you're playing in your relationship how do i spot if my relationship's in trouble so how do i know if i'm in the danger zone Really looking at the first kind of module is all about awareness because that is what underpins the whole relationship reset because we want to be able to raise consciousness all the time. That's, Mm. you know, deep within the work that you and I do. And the relationship reset kind of takes that as a principle and you build on that every single week as the modules drop out. So you'd get each week, you get kind of a bit of a know how. So there's a topic of the week, it will explain. It would explain that topic with kind of research backed psychology based information. So it's not just something that's plucked out with an air going, I think Mm. this is something that would be great to talk about. There is some kind of science behind it all. And it talks about the reasons why we do things. And I don't think that we often really kind of look at it from that perspective. But I am a firm believer if we know why something's happening, we can make more sense of it and then we can decide to take a different route. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. With this awareness, like what, how do things proceed in the course and how, you know, what are sort of the more advanced modules that become uh, accessible once that awareness is there? Yeah. So I think all of it builds on the awareness, which is the first kind of module. And then from that, you, you then kind of move into the territory of reviewing, examining, understanding. So things like what is the role that I'm taking in my relationship? So you can learn about your own attachment style. You can learn about your partner's attachment style. And you can start to kind of put those two together to then work through some antidotes to counter some of those more kind of negative aspects of kind of, you know, something that you might bring into the relationship. And not everything in every kind of session are you going to kind of draw the same level from it's like anything that we learn some things will resonate more than others but I think from every single week you will take something away and within that there are kind of you know at least three three practical tools that you can do every single week and then there's a bonus section that's got anywhere between sort of two or two to three other practical tools that you can work on that just helps you to understand yourself and your relationship better and that's why I'm saying all of it is kind of underpinned by awareness 
Oh, awesome. Okay. What do people do in between? Like, let's just say the lab of your relationship Mm -hmm. is your relationship. So how do you see people doing the course and then bringing these insights into their relationship and bringing insights out? How do you make the most of the lab, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a great question. So at the end of the reset, so the last two weeks are dedicated, the the week 11 is dedicated to reflection. (laughs) And there's, there's reflection built into the kind of to the reset all along, because at various different points, you'll be doing some sort of reflective exercises. But then you get to kind of the end of the the program or kind of near the end of the program and you will reflect back on the last kind of 10 weeks that you've done and you'll start to pull out some of the key kind of pivotal moments. So what were your kind of highlights? What was it that you that really kind of stood out for you? And then you use that information in week 12 to build your own blueprint for the future. Ah, okay. So you start to kind of take those insights for yourself. So it's not about me saying, look, I think this is what your relationship needs. It's about Mm -hmm. you using your own insights and awareness and reflection to say, actually, these are some of the things that I need to do. And then you work out, well, how am I going to do it? Then you work out how you're going to kind of hold yourself accountable. And the beauty is, once you've got access to this, you can go back and do it as many times as you like. So it may be that you maybe go back and do your reflection every, I don't know, six months, every year, you make a kind of like an annual thing for yourself and you kind of, you know, you review your own blueprint and you maybe tweak or change it or, you know, at different times and different periods of transition in your life, you might need a different focus. So you might say, well, actually, do you know what? We were doing really well with communication, but then since the kids have got a bit older or things have changed a bit or we have had more demanding jobs or parents to look after our communication isn't quite the same way that it used to be I want to go back and revisit that module so you can go back you can revisit it you might then do a bit of a reflection and then go back into the blueprint and say right okay what's my focus for the next six months how am I going to benefit our relationship what am I going to do so it's kind of like a It is that tool, that guide that just grows with you because as you change and develop or you have different needs, you get to go back and pull different parts out of it. Oh, nice. Which I think is quite exciting. That does feel, because like one size fits all feels very Mm -hmm. invalidating. When I'm in relationship chaos, it really feels like I'm the only person who's facing this unique set of circumstances Mm -hmm. and while as relationship coaches we can say there's a lot of generalizable, like you're not alone, a lot of the sort of similar themes. But what you're saying is this particular reset customizes, allows you to take action based on your unique customized set of realizations. Yeah, absolutely. And I think because the tools are so varied across it and there's so many of them, then, you know, you don't necessarily have to use all of the tools. You use the tools that you need for that moment. And then it might be kind of, you know, I don't know, a year down the line where you go, oh, actually, I'm struggling a bit in this. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to have a look and see Mm. if there's anything kind of in there that can help me. Because Mm. I think the biggest problem that we've got in relationships or facing relationship challenges is that we just don't know how to fix it, right? We can be very capable, competent at work. We can solve lots of problems. We can be, you know, have a lot of responsibility and we can really thrive in who we are. And then it comes to your relationship and because it's so close to your heart and it's so important and it feels like there's so much riding on it we almost get kind of paralyzed by that so we get stuck in that kind of freeze mode where Mm. we just don't know what to do and so we do nothing we take no action and of course what happens when we take no action nothing changes still the same oh yeah totally you can tell i'm very passionate about this (laughs) oh my gosh totally no i'm excited what would you say is one or two of the biggest surprises the unseen stuff that actually comes out of this reset for people? I think the biggest surprise is just people understanding their own kind of abilities. So being Mm. able to take that information and then seeing the impact that it can have in a short space of time on their relationship. That is really welcome, hey, because you reach a place where you feel hopeless without agency. And again, one of the things that a client told me that was just totally eye-opening after years of saying, my partner needs to change, 
because mm-hmm. they're wrong and I'm right. Yeah. And, and and to be honest, that is often the societal message. Like, you go, girl, they're wrong, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't help us. My client said, you know, a major shifting point was when they said, I'm going to stop vilifying my partner and saying they need to change. Because to be honest, they do need to, like, there were some, there are definitely some fixed issues. And let's say weaknesses of their partner that that really are in in an ideal world would be fixed but my client was just saying i i can't just wait for my partner to make their changes i need to strive forward and see where my responsibility lies so taking more responsibility societally we're like don't take responsibility it's their fault you know you don't be the victim right is the is the message but my client realized that they were placing themselves in the victim role by saying, I'm 100% right. Even if you think you're 100% right, being like, well, I'll also step into the seat of responsibility. You have agency, and it is so cool. Yeah. But I just, and I think, like, holding on to this kind of right or wrong, good, bad, like, however we want to phrase it, it just really doesn't get us anywhere. I think you said something very early on in our podcast about just kind of being on the same team, mm. like, and just remembering that we're on the same team. And that takes that kind of heat out of that situation. So if I'm there and I'm simmering and I'm like furious with something that my partner's done and I'm thinking they are definitely in the wrong there, what good does that bring me? And if I kind of flip that and go, well, we're on the same team, does it really matter? Absolutely. And that's not to say that, you know, we shouldn't have kind of healthy boundaries or we shouldn't stand up for the things that we believe in, but it's... I think everything just has kind of like a, you know, a, a point where maybe things can kind of go too far. We can get kind of too stuck in the trenches. And sometimes we just need to be able to pull that back. And figure out like, what is it, what is the most important thing here? Yeah. 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 And a lot of people go like, we need to be 50-50 divided on the housework. Well, honestly, I never see that. And how important is that versus you know, the larger outcomes of the relationship. You know, one of the other things, too, is that we tend to say this person is acting like this because they want to hurt me. If Mm. you really zoom out, you often realize the person doesn't have capacity to do anything more. Like inequity can sometimes be because you're you're it's a it's a weakness. It's a weakness point of your partner. They'll never be able to stack the dishes like you want them to. And it sounds ridiculous to to conjure up but it it is true where you might just realize like that's not a battle hill i'm going to die on and let's focus again like you say on the strengths of where they really do show up but i'm not giving them credit yeah absolutely well half the time you're not even seeing it let alone giving them credit you're just not open to and this is why you talk about awareness being such a strong point that we need to work on because if i'm then i'm actively looking for those points i'm going to see more of them yeah. If I'm not, if I'm hell bent on believing that my partner is doing things maliciously to just upset and ruin my life, mm-hmm. then they're the things I'm going to find. They're the things I'm going to look for. Oh, you've got it. I'm learning Greek, obviously, because I'm in Greece. And uh, I'm very impressed by that. <laughs> well, it's still like freezing cold. Well, not freezing. <laughs> Relative. But there is a saying like, careful what you look for because you're probably going to find it or look, you know, the things that you look for, you're going to find. If we look for negativity, we'll find negativity. Yeah. And that's, yes. yeah. Absolutely, yes. Ah, so okay. Can you say that phrase in Greek? Oh my gosh. That, <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Oh my God, that's terrible. My Greek teacher is going to be like, yeah. I'll work on that and hopefully in a few <laughs> sessions I'll get better. Phtano <laughs> vrisko, whatever. Something I'm, like that. I'm impressed that you're even learning Greek, I tell you. <laughs> oh, I have to. I must. I must. No, I can absolutely understand that. Well. But yeah, as we know, language learning is not my strong point. Oh, my gosh. And I don't think it's mine either. But I tell you, so my man has a bunch of family members that are absolutely freaking hilarious. And if I don't learn Greek, I won't get the good jokes. <laughs> so... And also there's some really cool recipes that I want to learn. And if I don't learn Greek, I won't be able to spend time with these beautiful people and really pick up these pearls that just enrich Mm. my experience of Greece. 
Absolutely. We should uh, all be open to learning, that's for sure. Well, and hopefully I don't learn all the swear words, because I tell you, <laughs> there are a lot of them. Okay, so Relationship Reset, how do people get involved? Yes. So in every episode that we've ever, ever published, I think, <laughs> there is a link to Relationship Reset. So you can hit up the show notes at any time. You will see a link there. You can go, you can sign up. As soon as you do, you will um, get your first welcome message. You'll get access to the course. You get kind of welcome module that gives you kind of any questions you might want to know. And you'll get your first module. So you get started straight away. And then a new session drops every seven days. So whenever you signed up seven days later, you'll get the next one and then the next one until you've completed all 12 weeks. Awesome. Awesome. And just to clarify, though, that they'll drop, but you don't have to do them every seven days. You do have the flexibility. Yes, absolutely. So it is a go at your own pace. It's not, you know, you don't have to have done something. I'm not going to be marking your homework (laughs) or checking up on you. It really is designed for that kind of like self-study, self-pace, self-learning, but designed for people who just want to bring a little something extra to their relationship or want to get out of a hole if they feel like they're in a place that they never thought they would kind of find themselves and they're looking for that extra guidance but don't necessarily want to take that step of relationship coaching because we know not everybody wants to do that. They want to do something that's in their own kind of privacy, their own home, in their own space to be able to just mull over, think about their own thoughts, then it's just the perfect solution for them. Absolutely. And you mentioned again this rut and you know, all of us remember the very first days of a relationship where, you know, many of us look at our looked at our partner when we were first setting off going, wow, this person is so precious, so wonderful. I never want us to change. I always yeah. want us to have that spark and this magic between us. And let that be that driving motivation to say, well, gosh, how far we've drifted, but we can get back on course. There's a really great song and I love to listen to it and it's called Grow As You Grow as you grow, I think it's called. Mm. And in this, in the kind of chorus, it talks about how you don't have to leave to change. We can grow together if you will just kind of stay in the relationship. They're, they're not the words, but it's that sort of sentiment. Oh. And I just oh. really love that because I think in a relationship, if you can get to a space where you can support each other to kind of to grow and develop, or you can take the first move by kind of doing something, stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something else in a different way and just explore a little bit more and then bring a little bit of that flavour to your relationship and just see what happens, right? Because if we're not growing and we're not developing, then we are going to end up going backwards at some point. Oh, you've got it. And it just by you bringing that step and that momentum and energy forward into your relationship, taking the first brave step, Your partner doesn't have to like be amazing and totally change their ways 180 degrees. But if you can see a glimmer of their own desire and passion and and wanting to get your relationship back on track, if you see, if you ignite hope in them, then you're like, oh, this relationship, there's still energy here. There's still gas in this tank. Exactly. And that's what I think, you know, this is the, the reset is all about. It's about kind of taking that hope. And using a little bit of structure and a little bit of know-how to just get you back to something that makes you happier again. Totally. And if we go through the stages of relationship structure, that philosophy is like everybody's going to hit that rough year seven. It doesn't have to be at year seven. That dark night of the soul. Every relationship goes through this phase of total disillusionment. Like, this person is not the person I thought they were. Yeah. Or that phrase, is this it? Is this all we've got? (laughs) Tell you. I tell you. Every single relationship, if it goes that long, is going to hit that point. Yeah. And so the relationship reset is for all of us (laughs) to get over the second seven seven year hurdle. Hey, listen, I learned a lot just putting it together. (laughs) Oh my gosh, totally. (laughs) It's my go to (laughs) resort. And going strong. Yeah, indeed. Awesome. Well, Sarah, (laughs) thank you for sharing this. Well, thank you for, for listening and being so interested. It's a little bit of hope as our days get a little longer and we're getting a little closer to summer is that, you know, yeah, the brighter days are ahead, but we have to work our butts off. It doesn't come for free. Exactly. Just like anything. Well, well, I hope that was really helpful and has given people a little bit of hope and inspiration. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I'm sure in the next episode we'll be back to our usual format. <laughs> You've got it. You've got it. But it's nice to have a little surprise every now and again and share something different. Oh, totally. I love surprises. I love things that <laughs> shake up their routine. Do you know what? That's the thing that I love about recording with you. I could bring anything and you'd go, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> with enthusiasm and vigor. Oh my gosh, totally. Well, <laughs> listen, and it, you know you know how I love the intimacy rejuvenation, right? It's kind of like walking into the adult store and being like, what are we going to pick up today? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like anything, like improv, right? Yes and the yeah. scene. Sure. Why not? Give it a try. Like you said, right? Try it out 12 times and only after the 13th time can you say that you don't like something. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. All right. Huh. So you are on to salsa now, did you say? Salsa? Tango. 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 There is going to be a bit of a storm tonight, so I'm going to check in oh. with my man to see if we're still on for tango. I think I need to go. Uh, you know... You know when you feel like you because I haven't tangoed since I came since I came from Toronto and I, I feel like I need to break the seal, so yeah. I just need to go because I have the momentum, yeah. kind of like the relationship yeah. reset. If you're feeling it, yeah. dive in and don't let a storm get in your way. If you're feeling it, yeah. just start it. I think even if you're not feeling it, you should always start. That is true. <laughs> that ain't that the truth. God. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Well, so you're gonna tango and yes. I'm gonna. Trip the light around my kitchen and have some nice food. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, awesome. Oh, all right. All right. Till next time. Till next time. So that's it for another week of Geordie Lass and Doc Sass. We hope you've enjoyed listening as much as we've enjoyed chatting. Get in touch and share your questions for relationship remedies and any hot topics you want us to cover. If you need help navigating all things relationships, Anna and Sarah are available for one-on-one coaching support. Email info at geordielass.com. Please remember to like, share, subscribe if you've enjoyed listening. And if you've not, how on earth have you made it this far? I promise we'll try harder next time.